This video is about learning outcome number one, defining essential terminology related to frequency distributions. So let's say we have a bunch of data, like a big table of numbers like this. These are duration times in seconds of eruptions of the old faithful geyser. Now, if I have this list of numbers, um, well, they tell me something. They tell me a lot of individual things. Um, particular duration times for particular eruptions of the old faithful geyser. Um, but that's not quite enough um, to give me a sense of how long those eruptions typically are or what the distribution of those eruptions are or what the variance um, or variation in the lengths of those eruptions are. Um, so if we want to start analyzing this data, one of the first things that we want to do is create what's called a frequency distribution. That's going to take this list of numbers and it's going to allow us to make a lot more sense out of it. So in a frequency, frequency distribution, this is what we do. Um, data are partitioned um, among several categories. We're going to call those categories classes. And then within each class, we're going to list the frequency or number of values in, in each category. So here's an example using these duration times of eruptions of the old faithful geyser at Yellowstone National Park. Um, if we were to take those numbers and sort them into all of these different classes. So the first class includes um, one geyser that had a duration time between 125 seconds and 149 seconds. And then we have other um, classes here. Um, 150 to 174 seconds. There were no values in our table um, that were in that range. Um, the same thing is true in the second row. And then uh, as we go through the table, we see that we've got um, 34 of those eruptions lasted between 225 seconds and 249 seconds. So what's good about this is it takes this list of data, this list of, I think, 50 numbers, and allows us to start to make sense of, of the patterns here. We see just from looking at this chart that that duration time tends to be on the higher end. We have this, this one duration time that's, that's very low between 125 seconds and 149 seconds. And then most of the duration times are around this 225 to 249 range. Um, so this is already giving us a sense of, of the data set. I'm um, just grouping um, each of these pieces of data um, by the duration, putting them into different classes, and then just looking at the frequency in each class. Now, whenever we're given a frequency distribution like the one on the last page, um, we might be asked to identify the lower class limits, the upper class limits, the class width, the class midpoints and class boundaries for the given frequency distribution. Now, none of those have been defined for you yet, but I thought they would be best defined if we were looking at an example. We also want to identify the number of individuals included in the study, or not really individuals in this case, it's just pieces of data. The number of numbers um, that we, uh, or the number of eruptions that we're counting um, when we uh, started this, uh, when we created this frequency distribution. Okay, so here's the first question. Um, it, it's asking us to identify the lower class limits. Lower class lim limits, excuse me, are the smallest numbers that can belong to each of the different classes. Um, so the lowest number on in each class here is just 125, 150, 175, 200, 225, and 250. It's just the number on the left actually very simple. Those are our lower class limits. Now our upper class limits are the largest numbers that can belong to each of the different classes. So those are just the numbers on the far right. So our upper class limits are 149, 174, 199, 224, 249, and 274. And um, then we're asked for what's called the class width. Now the class width is not the difference between an upper class limit and the lower class limit. It's the difference between two consecutive class limits, lower class limits. 
in a frequency distribution. So I'm actually looking at this 125 and the 150, the lower class limit for the first class and the lower class limit for the next class, and then I'm subtracting them. So the class width is 150 minus 125, which gives us a class width of 25. Um, after asking for the class width, they ask us to find the class midpoints. The class midpoint is the value in the middle of each class. So we're going to take the upper class limit and the lower class limit. We're going to add those together, and then we just divide by two. It's the average of the upper class limit and the lower class limit. So we would add this 125 and 149 and divide by two, and we get 137. Now notice that 137 is 12 more than 125. It's like the difference between this 125 and this 149, that's uh, 24 seconds. Well, if I split the difference of that 24 seconds, that's 12 seconds. So for the first one, the um, class midpoint is 12 seconds more than the lower class limit. It's 132nd, or 137, excuse me. So now I'm going to add 12 seconds to 150 and 12 seconds to 175 and 12 seconds to 200 and so on. I mean, you could also add these together and divide by two, add these together and divide by two and so on. But I find it's easier to figure out what that sort of increment is. Um, find out what the class width is and then, or not the class width, um, find out the difference between the upper class limit and the lower class limit, take half of that, and then, so we get 12, and then we're going to just add that 12 to all of those lower class limits. That's how I choose to do it. You can also add the lower class limit and upper class limit and divide by two to get the class midpoints. So if we do this, we have 137, um, 162, 187, 212, 237 and 262. Okay, and then we want to look at the class boundaries. Now class boundaries, you might think that those are the same as class limits. They're not quite the same. Class boundaries are numbers that are used to separate the classes, but they are with um, the boundaries without the gaps created by the class limits. Look at the first class and the second class. Notice you've got 149 seconds in the first class. That's where the, the first class ends. And the second class begins with 150 seconds. So that class boundary between the first class and the second class, it splits the difference of that one second. That one second difference between classes, it splits the difference. So you could do one, uh, 149 plus 150 and then divide by two. It's gonna give you the average between that upper class limit and the lower class limit um, of the next class. That's one way of doing it. Um, or you can just see that there's a difference of one and add half of that to that upper class limit. So we get 149.5, 174.5, 199.5, 224.5, 249.5, and 274.5. But then we also need to add one at the beginning, um, assuming that the pattern holds, and of course we do assume that the pattern holds. Um, we'll just subtract 0.5 from that 125 to get that first class boundary. Um, so this is just the formula. You add the upper class limit of one class and the lower class limit of the next class and divide the result by two. Or you can just look at the difference between those two and then split the difference and add it. Okay, so we're asked for the lower class limits, the upper class limits, the class width, the class midpoints, and the class boundaries um, for the frequency distribution. We came up with those, and now we're asked to identify the number of individuals included in the study. Or in other, other words, identify the number of data points that we had when we began. Well, we could go back to the original data set and just count them. Um, I believe we had um, three rows, and each row had 17 columns within this, the last row wasn't complete. You could do it that way. Or what I would recommend, if you have a frequency distribution, is to just add the frequencies. This one represents one eruption. This three represents three eruptions. 34 represents 34 eruptions. 
that had this duration, and then 12 represents 12 eruptions. So if I want the total number of data points included in this summary, I just add the frequencies. So it's just 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 3 plus 34 plus 12, which is 50. OK, so that is the essential terminology associated with uh, frequency distributions. And let's just go over it again quickly as a review. So we've got lower class limits. These are the smallest numbers that can belong to each of the different classes. It's the number on the left. Then we have upper class limits. Those are the largest numbers that can belong to each of the different classes. That's the number on the right. Then we've got the class width. That's the difference between two consecutive lower class limits in a frequency distribution. You don't want to subtract upper and lower class limits. You want to subtract a lower class limit from the, the lower class limit that, that's in the next class. Or I guess you want to look at two consecutive classes, take a lower class limit, and then subtract the lower class limit from the class before that. That's your class width. Class boundaries are the numbers used to separate the classes, but without the gaps created by the class limits. So you look at the numbers that are sort of on the boundary, the upper class limit of one class and the lower class limit of the next class. You add those together and then you divide by two and that's gonna give you the class boundary. And you keep doing that for all the classes and then you assume that the pattern holds um, and you use um, that same uh, difference at the very end of the last class and at the very beginning of the first class. And then class midpoints, these are the values in the middle of the classes. You can find the class mid midpoint by adding the lower class limit and upper class limit, and then you're averaging them. So you just divide by two. And that's it for learning outcome number one. I'll see you in the next video for learning outcome number two.